Okay, everybody, good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in bead shop land. It's Kate Richberg, and it is time for the Bead Doctor edition of Free Tip Friday. We've got Janice coming on here in just a second, and I'll put my face up on the screen in just a second, and we will have a fun-filled time, just like we used to do over the counter when we were a brick and mortar store. So by answering all those bead doctor questions, and let me, uh, I've got so many things in front of me, you should see my bead table and you're gonna see it in a second because it's kind of a mess. But let's see if Janice uh, is on. Hello, JP. Let me get, let me actually add her into the stream. Hang on one second. Let me take this off. Here I am. And let's add Janice. There we are. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm well, I'm waiting for the cicadas to come out in Virginia. Right, it's that time. Yes, I, I think, I believe it's, they sleep for 17 years. And then millions of them come out and they were supposed to come out last week. But, um, so it's, that's, I'm good. That's what I'm waiting for, sitting it's here. Okay it's it's yeah. kind of like a, you know, the, what was the, there was one little house on the Prairie Book where all the grasshoppers came, right? So are you? It's a kind of maybe the like same that, thing. Yes. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to churn some butter while you wait? Tell me yeah. about your, tell me, talk to me. Uh, I don't, can you hear me okay? Uh-huh. Can you hear me? I, okay. I, yeah. I hit my earpiece and I was freaked out for a second that you couldn't. Uh, I don't know. It's just a weekend do it Friday. So I thought I'd, it's very I don't cute. know, put this bandana on my head. Why not? I don't know. Why not? Well, and I'm wearing hey, a little. You, you could wear a paper bag and you'd still look good. That's you very could. nice. Thank you. I did get, I did delve into my vintage jewelry box today and I'll show you guys. I'm uh, wearing these, I think we're out of Grand's little box of gems here. So, and they're a clip. Very comfortable. Do they have a name on the back? Do they have a name? I don't think, you know, let me look. It looks like it's stamped, but. Like initial or. Oh, uh, it, you know what? These actually might be sterling with a vermeil wash over them. That's what Possibly. I think that maybe it's they look stamped. nice. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. I just thought I'd try and, I don't know, pull it to get, you know, these brooches live on my desk. So I pulled it, put it all on and did a little. There we go. Straighten out my head. A little <laughs> Rosie the Riveter tribute. So that's what I've got going on today. Because we're hard at work. So that's so that's what I felt like doing. Anyway, and as Grand would say, I pulled on my dungarees and got to work. So uh, but we have so much to cover today and we've got so many people watching and ready for bead doctor so i know that some of you guys are new watching us uh on our stream so while i show the different places that you can find us around the web jp why don't you talk a little bit about the history of bead doctor so everyone is up to uh up to snuff on that well um, we had a shop in Palo Alto called the Bead Shop, which was first started in 1981, um, close to 82. And uh, we used to get people in who would bring broken jewelry in. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's, there's the group of people who want to string something new. There's the, there's the group who wants to just drop it off and have it restrung. There's the group that has one earring. They lost right. the one and then they want to match it one, exactly. In a precious little like baggie or something they come yeah. in or an envelope, yeah. an old envelope, roll that out. Yep. And they, they cannot imagine not finding those beads from 15, 20 years ago at a, right. at a bead store. 
and right. making exactly the same thing. Um, and over time, we just became really experts on how to repair things, how to uh, problem solve why something is breaking over and over again. So there was the educational side of the business, which mm -hmm. you really fostered the growth of. And then there was the, you know, the stuff that came in on a gurney and I would hold up my stethoscope and I right. had to give them the bad, bad news, have to right. give them the bad news. Like, you know, your pearls broke right here at the back. No, we can't just add one pearl. <laughs> no, we're so calling it, this patient at 12.35 PM. Yeah. We've yeah. got to revive it. Yep. So we used to do a lot of repairs, um, a lot of renotting, helping people to redo jewelry. And I don't know how we got nicknamed bead doctors, but we just, that's something that we happened. Just did. And well, we did. I remember one Halloween, because when we had uh, the brick and mortar in Palo Alto, our flagship, because we had other stores as well, but we would dress up every Halloween um, in the store. And this was in the old store on Hamilton Avenue. And that year, I remember, remember we had Jane, Nurse Jane working for us. Right. And right. she she brought you all of those, med you had like a catheter hanging off of you and you had, uh, you know, a, a, a stethoscope, yeah. you had everything. And so I think that's when uh, you christened yourself uh, the bead doctor Maybe. and it kind of Maybe. it yeah. kind of stuck I as right. I remember but um but it's kind of fun so so this segment though we have been taking a little bit of a break from our free tip Fridays just because we've been so busy and trying to play catch up here um uh but we love this first Friday and and hanging out with all of you so um we've gathered a few um things that we uh want to uh, talk about today. And I guess I'll just jump in. Right. Let's just jump All in. All right. I'm going to take a bracing drink of coffee. So we would get lots of questions, uh, not only in the stores, but also uh, Drea gets them. Sometimes mm -hmm. I get them in my email. You get them. We, we're happy to answer questions um, mm -hmm. about how to string something or why something is breaking or flaking or not working. And we got, didn't we get a question? Um, yeah, we have. About, about that string on. Um, the string on, yeah, the string it. on round and the string yeah. on uh, tube, which I have here. Yeah. And then I also put up on the, um, on the screen, if you do have questions, you can just jump right on to our website. Um, and do our contact form, or you can just email us right at info at beadshop.com and we'll save them, of course, for next time. If you do have other questions, you can submit it right in the chat right now during this live broadcast. I, I think you've frozen. Or else maybe it's me. Am I frozen? Am I frozen? Let's. There we go. I'm here. We're good. Janice, I'm adding you back. Okay, thank you. There you go. You can hear me. Sorry, I, our internet just um just fell right out but i think we're back on so sorry about that i am going to put this on you can hear me okay. i could for a minute and, or a second and now you're gone again i'm not going to go anywhere i'm just going to stay here and um let me go over to youtube and see
Hey, JP, can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay, I think I managed it. Okay. I don't know. I a quick second to say hi to everyone over on YouTube. I probably right. missed, maybe I missed saying hi to Anne. I think Anne, I left off the, what do they call those bodies of when you say hi to people? The string, is uh, that a string? string? A text string, something, some kind of a string. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's right. So sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. Our uh, the internet kept uh, kept switching off, but let's um, let's. I'm just going to keep. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Let's do it. All right. So let me get this going, and let me talk about. Uh, it was a good thing I didn't drop any swear words when I thought we were off the stream. <laughs> no, I'm good. Um, here we have, we had a question, I think, from Julie who wrote in about the string on round and the string on tube. And I think we did something about those guys a while back. Um, and I, I really like these and I probably don't use them as often as I, as I should. Um, these are a, a silicone on the inside, right, JP? Let me get a little mm -hmm. closer. Yes here and so why don't you talk a little bit about these guys and i'm going to actually go get the correct thread for these i think we need a thread and we need uh i'm going to double check the chain okay okay so um these these are a fairly recent um design if if any of you have used the uh fish knot which is what is used a lot on the ends of macrame or even leather um, necklaces and bracelets, which is adjustable so you can go in and out. These tubes um, have, and I probably should go look, uh, let me just look at the, the dimensions on them. Um, yeah, but the they're intended for. Or um, I believe a one millimeter or a 0.5. The inner on the tube, the inner hole is 1.5. Um, so you could fit like uh, if you, you're going in two directions. So you could fit 0.75, um, maybe 0 0.70 um, into from each side, maybe even 1.0. And then the, mm -hmm. and I've the, got a few of these to test. Okay. Then the string on round has an opening of two millimeters, so it's a bit bigger okay. hole. And it's silicon, so it's like a a soft, mushy, very similar to those uh, earring backs that you put your post into, that you marry your post to, that right. spongy kind right. of. Okay, take it away. <laughs> You're like, okay, I've riffed as long as I can. Yeah, I can. Um, right. Um, yeah, and it has like, yeah, like you were saying, those little, those clutches, those plastic clutches we're selling now, um, they're kind of similar in uh, with that. So I've got a 0.5 millimeter um, cord right here, and I am going to... Um, make a little bit of a of a what do I want to say a diagonal cut there can you hear me okay JP I can I can okay um, great 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 I'm just checking on the chain that will work with it yeah so you can see here um, that that it's kind of a sliding kind of a thing this one with the 0.5 so it fits, mm -hmm. it might be just a touch loose for that. If I were using this um, like a bracelet, probably, what I would do, see how I put one end through one way and the other end through the other. And then I would just go ahead and I would tie this knot at the end of each one, right? So it doesn't slip back through, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. So I'll. So that's the point five. I have the one millimeter here, and again, I'm going to do a diagonal cut for this, and Kate, I'm going to bring Kate, it through. Kate, do you that. have any uh -huh. of the fine line with you? 
the fine line chain? I do. I have I have fine line chain right here. I got a okay. scrap of it. We're okay. going to look at that next. Okay. So here's the, and because I honestly, I haven't played with these for so long. So Julie, thank you for that question. Sometimes I forget about these little dudes and I like them a lot. Um, the one millimeter, yeah, that's the one that's perfect. See how it mm -hmm. stays in place there? Mm -hmm. That's the one I like a lot. So again, if I were doing this as a closure, and it really bites in there, it's nice, it's tight. And you can come in and go once and go around twice and come in and then you could do that same thing over here and then you could put and this could be a necklace or a bracelet right i'm just doing mm -hmm. this as a little yeah. shorty i also used them especially the tubes for the ends of lariats like on 1.5 or 2 millimeter leather you know just uh -huh. on the tips of uh like a necklace that you tie that's oh, on yeah. a heavier leather just to use it as a tip. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's just really right. attractive. Like, yeah. Just on the end. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. this. Right. And so here's, here's that. And this is the string on tube. Tube. Yeah. Here's the string on round. Let me check with the string on round with the 1.5 millimeter leather and let me just see if this will fit again cutting that this is 1.0 right here this leather the blue okay the this brown is 1.5 and it's going in the string on round and it does indeed fit nice and tight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the tube for the 1.5, I'm sorry, the tube for the one millimeter and the round for the 1.5. Okay. Yeah. Let me get that, let me get that chain. I've got this fine line chain. I just grabbed a scrap of it here. I've got another string on tube. This might be a little thin for it. But our chain, uh, we can also check. I can check um, and see if there's, or you can even look online, JP, and see what we might have that might work for it. Uh, the, the chain should work with the... Uh the tube because the chain is a 0.7 millimeter and the tube is 1.5 opening. Yeah, uh, it's a little it, loose. It is? See that? Yeah. Um, it's a little it's loose. It's been so long since we have used, you know, Julie, I know since we, we've used these guys. Yeah, let me look. I'm going to continue looking for some chain. Yeah. That. Um. Well, in the meantime, because we'll get back to this guy, we'll get back to these. I, for this chain, what I like with this fine line chain, we have a fold over crimp um, mm -hmm. that I really like with it. Um, let me see if we have one um, because I want to show you. I bet I've got one right here in this little findings box. Um, the fold over crimp with this fine line chain i think yeah i've got one right i've got one right here it's not the right color mm -hmm. but that's okay um i want to show you how it looks um because again if you're using this as a lariat or something or you need to put something on the end or you want to attach it to a clasp this fine line also, it, since it's so slim, you can also string beads on it too, if yes. the beads have a large enough hole, right? So even these drops, our check glass drops, right? If you're making like a super simple, um, like summer necklace, right? And you're just adding 
I could drop then maybe, I don't know, I'm looking around to see what I've got here on my bead table. I've got some regular shadows. Of course, none of these colors are the right finishes. But I don't know, these drops and I have been having a moment lately, and I'm going to show you another trick. It was Janice's request from Wednesday that we didn't quite get to, which was wire wrapping these guys with the ball head pin. But take a look at how something like that I'll get my fingers out of here in just a second. And even the mixed metal colors don't bug me at all. And you know, if you know how both Janice and I design, we are loving mixing uh, metals. So look at how Charming and Cindy Brooke is asking, is there a wrong color? Is there? And no, no there isn't. But look at how sweet just those look that way hanging on that chain. They do. They do. Um, now the chain, British. Kate, oh sorry, uh -huh. the chain was no, actually, ahead. the chain is actually a, quite an old, it's not a new invention. Uh, there no. was a lot of jewelry uh, strung in the 40s on chain and exactly. the beads would go all the way to the back. What we found right. with Bead Doctor is that if you're going to string your beads on chain, it's less flexible or less stretchy than even soft flex, mm -hmm. but you have to leave some air for the necklace to make lots of turns. Otherwise, um, the chain will break. So yeah, uh, it'll don't kick, worry like, about. Oh, I was just ahead. gonna say, don't worry about having a little bit of chain showing. That's very normal. Um, if you're going to string all the way around with beads, just leave some right. space and make sure you close it with your clasp together, both sides. And you can, you've seen this, like if you have in your vintage jewelry drawer that I know some of you have, you have like an old set of like Swarovski crystal beads or a lot of times crystals or crystal pearls were strung on this and it was known as foxtail back in the day. And mm -hmm. so it is true, Janice, when you say that people would bring these in to be doctor to get fixed, we would see, you know, the chain or whatever, or something having come off the end. We did carry this type of chain at the shop. And sometimes we would do that kind of restoration mm -hmm. um, on pieces, which was nice. And this is the closure. And I wanted to show it to you that we call this the fold over crimp. You can also use this on the 0.5 millimeter leather if you wanted to as well. So that would go in there. Um, but essentially what this is, it's a little U-shaped cup like so. And your chain, what I do is I come in because I like a little bit of chain to hang out the top and then I actually clip it away. It makes it easier for me to, to close it if I have just like maybe a 32nd of an inch there that I can hold on to it with my thumbnail like that. Then let me get a little closer so you guys can see this. And then all I do to fold it over is I'll get my bent chain nose and I'll very carefully, we don't want to harm the chain, but we just want to very carefully with our pliers fold that edge over and see how the bent chain nose is really the right tool for this job, how I can get the tips right in there and just tighten that down. Then I'll turn it around the other way and it should kind of be caught in there. And then I'll fold the other side down. Just really gently, not with a too heavy of a hand. And then if it needs evening out, I'll even it out at the bottom and at the top. And then I'll just come in and give it that little hug. And then you can see you've got a little touch of chain uh, at the top. And I'll come in and I'll clip that away. See that right there? And that's it. That's all she wrote on that. So it's a nice way uh, to close up this fine line um, if you haven't done it yet. Right? Hey, and we don't Rachel, have, uh, oh, sorry. We don't have chain that works with the string on tubes. We actually got okay. the string on tubes 
uh, to use with leather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to use with cord. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that was correct. That was my feeling. Right. Of it. Yeah. But that's so these string ons. Let me make my little picture here so you guys can see it. The string ons are here with the string on round and the 1.5 mil, the string on tube, the one mil, and then this, what we call our fine line chain, has that um, fold over um, crimp at the end. And you would then attach whatever you'd like to that loop right there. And I would use our oval jump ring to connect um, something to the end with that so that your opening on the ring would sit to the side and be nice and secure. Okay. Um, and then Rachel has a question about this and I will show it. If you wanted to glue the chain first, what glue would you recommend? So Rachel, my guess is you're asking if I wanted to glue the chain into this channel, um, what glue would I use? I honestly probably wouldn't glue to be honest, because what you want when this metal, and I'll, I'll lift this up, if this is my crimp and this is my chain right here, okay? I want, when I fold that crimp around my chain, I want, I don't want any air in between the chain and the crimp. So it's metal, metal to metal. So that really um, holds it in there. And I'm gonna pull on this, really pull on it. And I want you to see, see it's coming out just a little. So that means that I need to really crimp it down. I need to test that. So I'm gonna crimp it. Let me try that again. Yep, there we go. Because, and I'm really, you can see how tight I'm holding on to this, right? So check them before you call it a day. And I should have checked it before I cut that little bit off at the end. But you really wanna hug it there, then grab it. See that? If I really pull on there, that's not going to come off because there's no air between the chain and the crimp. Does that hey, make could sense? Can I ask a question? Sure, of course. So if you if you did have a a a, a crimp or a, a a you know an end that you were going to put in several pieces of leather or sure. you were going to it didn't like have an opening of it like the tiara cap yeah like those right. and some of the round mm -hmm. tiara cast caps mm -hmm. what glue would you use yeah so i would use that zap that's what i'd use um i have also followed up by the e6 <coughs> pardon me the e6000 right the zap I really like because, let me get, I've got a scrap of leather here that I'm spying, so I'm going to pick it up. And let's say, you guys, that I was going to glue these ends into this end cap. And I'm not going to physically do it, but I want to show you how I prep it. So here's my two millimeter. I'll cut this end. I'll make sure that I have nice blunt ends like this because when i apply glue into crimps and i'm looking for my my toothpicks what i'll do is i'll put a little i'll get a little bit of glue and i'll put it right in the back all the way on the back wall of the crimp then i'll dab some more glue apply it to the tips of my leather here I'll apply it to the front of the leather and the back of the leather. This, I think, will only take three of these. And I'll put these in. And I'll make sure, again, that the leather is reaching the back wall of this crimp. Okay. So that's, and you can see how this, this leather fills that crimp right there. So the zap I like because it's fast. It, it grabs onto it and it's fast. And I use this in my metal work. If I were going to make this, you know, to sell or to go out in the world, I'd probably use zap. Though I have on some pieces, like I did that 
um, woven cuff not too long ago and I use that big clasp. I use the E6000 and I was really happy with it as well. I think I gravitate towards the zap because a lot of times I'm doing these under the gun, right? And I'm going like, oh my gosh, I've got to finish this and we've got to get it photographed and we've got to get it up on the web. So I do this because it's fast. But both of these glues, in order to um, adhere and, and have a lasting um, bond, you really want to let both of these cure a full 24 hours before you start messing around with this piece, meaning wear it out or give it away or something like that. The glue needs to bond, needs to cure after you've put it in your piece. So either way, even though this sets up so quickly, I would let both of these sit overnight. Anything to add to that, JP? You use the zap quite a bit, don't you? I do. And then I also have here um, some of the other caps that. Okay. Uh, if you, do you want me to show. Yeah. yeah let let's me get just you show them for a second. I've got okay. this one from Tierra Cast. Hang on here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to oh, highlight you right there. There, there you go. are. There you go. This, that this palace one. cap, the one that you have. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then this is you would you're not going to crimp this one. So whatever you do no. to glue inside it has to be full enough to to so that the glue will adhere to all sides. Uh, you mm -hmm. might use it with several strands of kimono cord, which I would tie yeah. together first. This is like probably its own bead doctor show that we mm -hmm. want to do or. Um, of, you know, like a, one of our shows, but mm -hmm. that E6000, uh, it would be my second choice. It would always be, uh, I, I always uh, go to the zap, zap glue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a, Sydney Brooke has a question that I'll put up on the screen. She says, would I use zap glue to glue a flat back crystal to metal? And I, that's when our friend, the hypo cement, comes in. So if you guys remember that piece that I did for the challenge, for the beetle-on challenge, in, in the back right here, I stamped this little tag that says create, right? And I used a little indentation stamp and I floated that flat back crystal in the little indentation. This right here I used the GS hypo and they're they're in there. They're not going they're not going anywhere. But again, what needs uh, to happen here is they need to sit for 24 hours so that glue bonds. But the the hypo cement we've used and we use this all the time in the shop to do rhinestone repair. We were really known for our rhinestone repairs. We had boxes of old Swarovski crystal repair rhinestones and people would bring in their old jewelry that we would uh, refurbish. And this is what we use then and what we'd still use, uh, use today. So uh, I would go for the hypo cement. I, I agree with you. I think that yeah. um, if, if you need a glue that's going to be pulled on, like in, in the, into the, the leather, into the crimp tube, um, or into a tube, you want something really that's going to be double duty like your zap glue. If you have something mm -hmm. that's going to uh, adhere to one thing and it's not going to be pulled on, the hypo cement is really... Um, a great choice or for thread it's a great choice it dries mm -hmm. clear i was just gonna right i was gonna mention let me see i've got one here like here if we were mm -hmm. doing this what we call this little fishtail um mm -hmm. i mentioned it earlier uh, closure. yeah that's the one that's where we glue it right there mm -hmm. yeah exactly so so that's that. So Cindy Brooke is requesting a whole bead doctor on glue, all glue all the time. We'll have to do that. I love glue. One. I love glue. So Janice, you wanted to see me wire wrap our little friends here, right? I love this little trick you have, and I want to use it in a project. 
I just think this is the, better than the bee's knees. This is better than sliced bread. <laughs> well, it's just wonderful. This it well, thank you. I well, you know, and this is kind of the, the metal worker in me coming out here. So this was that winter white bracelet I made a while back. Um, and you saw me on that episode. We got these drops in. We had all of these white pieces in, and we had them for about a hot minute. They didn't last long, so they're not back on the website. But we've got a lot of these check drops here, these smooth drops. And can you see that little ball head pin right there? And this, um, I just like the way that it's just a nice little added touch to this. So I'm going to show you how I wire wrap these. And I used those ball head pins on Wednesday when we did this little dangle with our Tierra cast piece, right? So I have them here and I'm gonna wire wrap one of these guys. I love the look, the finished look of a, of a dot head pin, right? I think it has, again, kind of that vintage feel to it. It has kind of a hand wrought feel to it all of which kind of float my boat. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this through. Now you need to, and I'm gonna get kind of close up here because I want you to see this. Now this is a little bit of an advanced technique. So you wanna get your wire wrapping down before you do this. And honestly, when I wire wrapped some of these guys here, I did have some breakage, okay? so. You just want to be really uh, careful with what you're doing. You okay there, JP? <laughs> I am. My earbuds are uh, unfortunately are running out of battery, so I'm just using oh. one at a time. <laughs> oh, that's okay. There you go. Well, as long as you're all good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and position the camera so you guys can see that. Before I even bring this drop down, this is going to be kind of a loose wrap. So I come in and I use the tip of my pliers to kind of bring this up. So it's kind of a little U shape here like this. And then I'll slide this drop down so it sits inside the U. Okay, because this is where when you bend this wire up, if your drop is already on and you try to bend this wire up, that's the bead the whole shatterer. That's what mm -hmm. breaks that hole open. Okay. So if you do this little U, you have a, a lesser tendency to um, to break this bead. So let's hope that I don't live on air. Okay. And then I kind of, whoop, see that? Wah, wah. I couldn't see what I was doing. So let me make this, let's consign this one to the pile. Can you use and the same pin again? I can, but I want to show you about what size I made that loop. And I knew it when I was making it that it was too small. So okay. I have to warm up just like you guys do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me, I'm going to lift this camera up so I can see it a little bit better. And you know what I'm going to do instead? Because I haven't wire wrapped in like a couple of weeks. So. You know, even I get rusty. I'm going to get my round nose plier and I'm going to, let me measure so you guys can see this so that you don't make the same mistake that I do. <laughs> That's about a quarter of an inch. I've gone up. Okay. And I'm going to use my round plier. So I really have some room there. There we go. See that? Now let me put this on. Let me slide her down. There we go. That's better. See, so I've got a lot of room there. So that when, because when metal comes up against glass and there's no air, it will shatter. Your beads will shatter. So I'll come in and see how when I press this together, how I've got room there for this to move around. And it's happy. So then I just make my loop. I bend this wire. I'm going to bring it up. I think I need to bend it down just a little past that ball. There we go. Because I want that ball to kind of be sticking up a little bit there. 
Now I now I just wire wrap like I would a briolette or anything else. Right? I'll bring it in. I'll straighten out that loop. And I'll grab onto it with my bent chain nose. If I'm connecting it to a um, chain, I would do it at this point, right? Obviously, before I wire wrap it. Or I could connect it with a jump ring. But then that little end, I'll just bring it around. And I want to be very mindful to keep the air with that loop so that my little drop doesn't shatter like its brother drop did earlier. And about three wraps should do it. I'm going to get that right in there. There we go. Then I can kind of, this little ball pin, I can pull out a little bit from the from the loop but it does have kind of a nice vintage flare to it can you see that okay that's very there cool is. is that what you did on the bracelet yeah so see or here, here was, it is. i was thinking that on the bracelet the dot was right up against the drop but I, maybe i'm wrong no, see, it's oh, right up there against the loop. Oh, there, yeah, there it is. Yeah, isn't that clever? Yeah. yeah. Now, if you wanted it, let's say, Janice, I'll pick up the gauntlet that you've just thrown down. I will. Uh huh. Uh huh. The bead gauntlet. Let me straighten look this at everyone, out. Everyone, how she's, how Kate is straightening that. She's patiently. Yeah, just with a light touch. Metal. Letting that bent chain, you know, I use this bent chain so much. And I want to show you this, the way that my hand, see how my hand is kind of naturally, um, what do I want to say, in a natural position here with my bent chain. If I use my straight chain, not that I don't, but with my straight chain, and you can't see what my arm is doing really, but but it's up in the air, right? That everything is kind of up and off the table here, right? So here with the bent, see how I can ground my, let me get this out of the way, how I can ground my, my wrist so I have a lot more support here with this bent chain nose. So that's a little... Um, that's just a little tip. These are the German bent chain. Um, I like them a lot. These are the German ones, and these are our Akano ones. You can see there's a little bit of difference in the slope of the of the heads. But if you're just starting out, these guys are great. And if you want to treat yourself, um, grab the grab these German ones. Okay. So, um, but that I'm still being said, using the Akano ones. You know, I are you? Like and they're nice. They're they're lightweight yeah. and I don't have yeah. to press open and close a lot. And yeah, I still they am feel using good. them. They yeah. feel good right here. Whereas some of you with hand issues, like I am starting to get, um, this thinner handle, and you can see my hand's already kind of red from using it, but right here, right? It's just, it's not quite as comfortable, but I, you know, I've used them for so long that it's natural, right? And we'll get these guys back in, uh, you know, sometimes the, the tools, it's been, um, it's, they're still from COVID, uh, you know, because these come from overseas, so it's harder to, uh, to keep these guys in stock, but this is something that we'll always carry. Um, and when it's available, um, if it's out, uh, put yourself on the notification list and you'll get an email as soon as they come back in. But these are real comfortable. Real, and they, you can also put yeah. them right here with your thumb and your index finger. But back to our friend here. If you wanted, let's say that I wanted to kind of have this as the down there and I wanted to create a little loop. 
what I might do, and I need to be careful because I, again, I don't want to bust that loop at the top of the bead hole. That's a little far out, but let me see if I can do it. Can you blend it with your push. hand without yeah, using the tools? I, I feel like this is so thin that normally what I would do is I'd push on this and I'd bend this right up against the bead, but it's it's a little um it's gonna break, I think. But you know what I might do? Let me let me just let me let me do this. I'm gonna cut this here. I'm gonna get my round plier. And maybe I would just rotate it up. Oh, see, even that pressure. I don't know if you guys saw that fly away. But you could kind of put your little loop kind of like that. I think that this is probably a no-go. Mm. This here. Unless this was more malleable and it was a finer gauge. We've got those silver mm -hmm. ones, Janice. The silver, right. the vermeil, and the... Um, mm -hmm the dead metal color and those are a 24 gauge or a 26 gauge they're real malleable so that would be a better choice for these guys here so you could also use just a thinner head pin and uh put a little oh, tiny yeah. 11 knot bead on the end of it and then curl it mm -hmm. yeah. and then curl it up yeah but right. for this we want that dot to be up at up at the top so we've got about 10 um minutes more or just a uh, uh or so and janice i i brought a couple of things uh that i wanted to share with you oh before we go to those this is i brought this charm bracelet as well and you can see to approximate that little dot that's just what you were speaking of janice a little uh -huh. um a little seed bead at the bottom kind of approximates that but one of the things that you have done in the past, and it's something that I didn't do a whole lot of until I came back to bead shop, was kind of this macrame closure mm -hmm. here and doing this macrame flat knot. And I wanted to point out how versatile um, this knot is, not only on a bracelet like this, but on a necklace like this one. Well, we and can you call can ourselves use... the macrame shop. We use macrame yeah. so much. I can't remember what life was like before macrame and ladder right? bracelets. And yeah, and yeah, I just don't remember. And you also yeah. used it. I'm going to pull this one down too. This is in our Odyssey piece. And what I wanted to show about both of these is you sometimes do the macrame a little bit differently for the button closure. Like a lot of times mm -hmm. what we do here is we loop whatever it is through the button. Okay, and that's where we start. But sometimes you start at the loop end. This is mm -hmm. that Odyssey piece that you did. Right. This is that kit that we had way back that we uh, we started oh, yeah. here with the loop. Remember this one with the, with yes. the elephant? This was a mm -hmm. pretty one. And the way that you do the button is instead of looping it through, you put whatever the base is in this case it was ck or it was ceylon and in this mm -hmm. case it was leather going all the way through right and then you macrame the stopper exactly which i think is a really smart way and like with this one what you did is the strands i'm going to get this guy out of the way there were so many strands, they would not go yeah. through that button shank. So I mm -hmm. had to uh, I had to figure out, well, how am how am I gonna do this? And so mm -hmm. that's where I said, well, let's do a tassel 
pathway and mm-hmm. then take a, a few of them up through the button shank. Mm-hmm. And so that flat macrame is here with all of these threads and stuff and they come out right here and that's the tassel. And then the leather is going on the rest of the journey here and mm-hmm. it's macrame as the stopper. And then again, the, the ends of this macrame have been glued with the GS hypo and then have been thread burned down. Okay, so I think it's a great way to kind of think about um, utilizing uh, this flat macrame in more, not advanced pieces, but, you know, we use it a lot in just our bracelets, but to um, have it come up here, I think is really pretty. And I also wanted to show, where did that go? Here's this one. This is a little bit of a different way of doing that knot. Um, so what I did here with this one, you guys might remember this with the quarter tilas. And if you haven't worked with the quarter tilas, this is my Bargello um, uh, little wrap. Just It was just a little bit of a single one. But I want to revisit this because quarter tilas, I am just wild for them. And we're going to be adding fabulous. some new, I love that. Yeah, I love this so much. And we're going to be adding some new colors for sure. But I started this, did the flat macrame. And then did the infinity stitch and went all the way down. But I wanted to show this closure on the end because a lot of times we do just a simple um, closure that just has a um, leather loop that's not covered, right? Right. Well, on this one, I macrame closed and then I took those macrame threads and macrame down one side and then added fresh threads and macrame down the other side and then had everything meet over here. And so this was a little trick that Ali Mori, Ali also uses a lot in her pieces as well. And I think that covered loop with the macrame just has such a nice um, appealing closure to it. And you can see how nice it sits over that button. And it adds just a little more of a pop of color onto your pieces as well. Well, it's it. If you don't know uh, how to do the simple macrame, we do have a skill builder on macrame. Watch any of our Wednesday shows; you'll probably see Kate doing macrame. You know, in a, a, videos that we already have or videos in the future. The thing about the macrame is it will make anyone's work look more professional. There is something yeah. about adding that just simple stitch that says to the eye, I, I'm, I'm cared for, I've been curated. Um, and it if really you sell elevates your jewelry, the look. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's just that extra really bang for your buck. It's just mm-hmm. so simple to learn and will give you endless joy when you look at your at your work. And it's also strong. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that you mentioned, Janice, in passing was if you sell your jewelry in conjunction with you saying now it's it's a strong closure. Both of those things are so important um, Mm -hmm. if you are going out and selling your pieces, and we hope you do. You know, there are many people Mm -hmm. who are jewelry lovers who would love to purchase your really beautifully well-made jewelry. And having people who don't make jewelry, who don't watch these broadcasts or whatever, they don't know um, this visually. It's just so stunning, and they'll have no idea how you did it, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we should have a show just on uh, all the different little ways and tricks of macrame. I mean, yeah. I know we show it a lot, but I'm, I can't live without it anymore. I don't even know what I did before. <laughs> Before yeah, I no, exactly. Do this very simple stitch, which yeah. um, I just love. It's just well, a signature. A of, yeah, a lot of times, this is the one that Allie did here um, with that bead crochet, but a lot of times with this, what we call the trails end 
closure, quote unquote. I did one here. This is a really big one, greatly magnified for demo purposes. But you can silk wrap it or you can add that macrame to it as well. So it's mm -hmm. really, um, I think it's a really great, great way to close this off. This is mm -hmm. the original trails end. And I'll show this before. Um, this will be the last thing I show before I we sign off here. Um, but let me. I'm trying to grab it off the board here without throwing everything else on the floor. This is a really um, pretty way of using the way you use that. Um, this is again with the silk wrap, but it could also be a macrame. This is silk wrapped with um, wax, wax linen, linen, Irish wax linen. But again, and this is all strung on wax linen here. This mm -hmm. is such a signature. Janice piece, I cannot even. It is, it uh, is, it really. I love that piece. That, see how that just um, knots so, around. So there. simple to make. So simple. Mm -hmm. We should do that again soon. Yeah, yeah, it's really pretty. And let me show you how it closes up. And Carol's asking, is the turquoise and brown multi-strand with the macrame still available as a kit? And I think the one that you're asking for uh carol let me know is it this one you're talking about because if it's this one we have the recipe up on our website um under odyssey this one is here this one was a kit that we did i don't know over a year ago because uh this is part of my tucson finds from 2019 right um this one is no longer available but the video is up and this is a great one for diving into your stash. This is all strung on thread here. Okay. But this trails end that I've got here. Let me raise this up. Uh, the way that this is, is it goes around like so. And then you've got also this, just this cord, the leather cord coming. And again, see Janice did that trick here that she did with the, this is two millimeter cord, this little froggy button from Green Girl Studios only fit on one, but there's no reason to despair. You just macrame or silk wrap uh, before it and after it, and you're good to go, making sure that the opening that you've done mm -hmm. will fit it. So you can see how that will come together. That was so much that fun stuff. to make. Yeah, oh. it really, it's a it's a great piece. Let me see if yeah. I can get it to sit right, though. But you guys and can see it. We're in the this. process of trying to find the white padres again. Our white padres yeah. have gotten very tan in color, but very tan, yeah. Um, but we'll get them back in, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But look at how pretty just those pops of color with the beads, these heart shaped beads, and the regular sealant that you chose, that's what adds the color. And then the Padres here are the background, the unifying stance on this. So we've had a couple of requests, JP. Um, yes. We, uh, um, Alvina says the macrame ends are beautiful. Please do a show on macrame closures. And okay. then um, we want to do a, um uh, a glue show we'll we'll okay. put both of those on the on the calendar and so okay. coral is saying that odyssey is the one that she was interested in and janice do you remember the name of this one it might be um let me i will but uh, essentially coral what this is all about is using and we have links on the website um, these coins we don't carry any longer, but you can just use a six millimeter round for this. Um, but the recipe is on the website. This is okay, wax I'm, linen. I'm putting it in right now. It's uh, oh, in the, of chat, the butterfly. Great. Flight of the butterfly is what it's called. This is wax linen. This is Ceylon. I think it's fine Ceylon here. And then this is one millimeter leather cord so those are the you know the basic stringing materials and then 
what really is attractive, well, it's all attractive, but what's really great about this is Janice did that flat macrame. And you know how you see sometimes the, where we do it with the Bollywood bracelet that has the eight dots around the outside? <clears throat> what Janice used instead of those eight dots are bugle beads. And they're really similar in color to the leather that's running through the middle. So it almost looks like there's three beads going mm -hmm. through here. So this is also a great one to kind of supplement and do a little stash diving um, with this. But it's really, uh, it's a beautiful piece and it's a lot of fun to create. And it's got a handout. It has episode notes. Mm -hmm. It has a video. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We've also just restocked a lot of the Dakota Stones uh, yeah, six just and eight up. millimeters so that you could pick some, some of the stones and then pick your wax linen. So it's it's just a fun project and really make it your own, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It's, I'm, I'm glad someone want that, uh, who was it that was interested? I forgot. It's Coral is saying that. Coral, yeah, Coral loves it. Thank you, Cora. That's really sweet of you. Um, we'll have to do this one again as well, because this was a yeah, good one. Yeah, it's a fun one. And that's what yeah. I like about these bead doctors. They're kind of fast and loose, and it reminds us, oh, right, <laughs> we need to do yeah. that one again. Yeah, What exactly. I want to, want to mention, if you guys are watching this live, today is Friday, May 7th, which is crazy that we're really into May. And I wanted to bring, if you looked at our newsletter this morning, okay, you saw that we had kind of a little special, I put together a special mix called Bouquet of Roses. And um, Janice and I were so playing pretty. around with it. And Janice was like, well, why don't you add, a, speaking of bugle beads, right? Why don't you add a bugle bead in there and that'll be like the stem of the roses, right? And so this is a little mix that I call bouquet of roses and it has from sterling silver roses or those purple roses all the way to the red roses, right? Mother's Day was big when my mom and my Uncle Joe would both get Gran usually a um, rose bush for Mother's Day. That was a, mm. a big Mother's Day gift in our family. So. Um, I always associate them with, uh, with Mother's Day. And then I did go stash diving in uh, my little uh, hoard of beads that I have here. And we found some really beautiful um, Swarovski crystal hearts. They are uh, shat they're the shadow uh, color, shadow over crystal. So they look kind of clear. But the shadow crystal is one of my favorite colors. It has just kind of a slight, a little topazy, a little gray, a little, you know, like a shadow. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And so I love the way that they mix in with these. And so it's a pretty little mix. It's on uh, the website um, and we've got them. They debuted this morning. It's a limited amount. Um, but I have still some available so you can go on and grab them. Now, we have two more things coming up this weekend. And if you're watching this live, again, this is Friday, May 7th. You're going to um, want to open those newsletters on Saturday and Sunday because what's in those newsletters are gonna pair beautifully with this bouquet mix. And that's all I'm gonna sure. say. They're that's really, true. we have some really, um, some really uh, cool, two cool things for you on both Saturday and Sunday. So if you, uh, let me go here and put this up. So bear with me here just a second. You can go right to beadshop.com for information on everything that we've used today in today's broadcast. And you can sign up for the newsletter if you haven't for the latest discounts, giveaways. Notice how I emphasized giveaways 
and new products. So you're not going to want to miss it this weekend. So Janice, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put you and I on. There we are. Let me center myself. And I think uh, yet another episode of Bead Doctor JP mm -hmm. has come to an I end. I know. And it's almost Mother's Day. It is. So happy yeah. Mother's Day to you and happy Mother's Day to my mom and all of those and to great you. moms. Yeah, well, I'm and a cat you. mom. <laughs> you know what? Everyone is a mother. I don't care if you're uh, a gentleman, a lady, or on some other a, a spectrum. We are all mothers because if you look around, there's someone in our lives that we mother. Yeah, and so sure. Sunday is a moment to acknowledge that we're all moms. We all take care of each other. And so the day yeah. is for everybody. Yeah, it's special. So happy and then it's day. happy Mother's Day. And speaking uh, about, I keep tilting my head like Alfred does when he's hungry. He's like yeah. this. There we go. That's better. <laughs> This way. Um, it's your special day next week. Next Wednesday, we yeah. are going to be celebrating Janice's birthday with a project that goes way back. We're really throwing it back here uh, yeah. in March. In May. Yeah. Um, a really fun project that I debuted uh, way back in the day when we had a brick and mortar. We have a really right. great handout that goes with it um, that I used to use in my class. Um, and I think you guys are really going to love these. And it's a, it's a perfect one uh, for JP's birthday. So we're going to be doing that together uh, next Wednesday on your yeah, birthday day. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's yeah, funny it's when you be... say brick and mortar and then I see those those blocks behind you with the wall, the concrete blocks. Right. And you know, how, how has life really changed? Yeah. Yeah, not not really. Not really. No. Well, everybody, Janice has started to wish you a happy oh, early birthday. Thank you. And a thank happy you so Mother's much. Day. And of course, you guys can always find us every Wednesday and some Fridays at 10 30 a.m. Pacific time right here on whatever channel you're watching us on. We broadcast on our beadshop.com uh, Facebook page, our main Facebook page, our beadshop.com group uh, called The Bead Table. And of course, you can always like and subscribe and find us on our YouTube channel. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube right now, hit that like and subscribe button because we really, really appreciate your support uh, from that. Because without you guys, Janice, uh, Janice and I uh, know this 110% that if uh, you guys weren't here, our uh, wonderful small woman-owned business would not be here either. So um, we really appreciate that. So thank you. thank you, JP. Uh, have a fantastic thank weekend. You. All you have a fantastic yeah. weekend. And Janice and I will be back on Wednesday at 1030. Thanks so much, Love everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.